Just a heads up, this video was made with the assumption that you have already watched Tommy's 7 Simul tutorial because it covers all of the lettering schemes, the pin positions, execution, all that stuff that I'm not going to cover in this video, but you have to actually know. With Oxford Memo, the execution is exactly the same as normal, except instead of memorizing the moves, you memorize where certain clocks will be after doing the move. So for example, if this is our Oxford Memo, for the first two moves, we always look at DL for the left hand and D for the right hand. These are called our reference clocks and they change only on the fourth move, which is a slash move, where they change to L for the left hand and DL for the right hand. So once again, we're going to start with the first two, which are DL and D for our reference clocks. When we see AJ, we're not going to do a one on our left hand. We're going to move our reference clock for our left hand to one. For our second letter, we had J, and our reference clock for that is the D clock, and we're going to move that to the position negative 2 relative to the top. Now for the second move, like I said, the reference clocks are the same, so it's still DL and D, and we had O and D, so we're going to move DL to O, and we're going to move D to D. So all the intuitive moves are the same as normal, and then here is our last memorized pair. And like I said before, our reference clocks do change for this. So it's L for the left hand and DL for the right hand. So we memorized GI. So we're going to move L to the G position, which is negative 5 relative to the top. And then we're going to move our right hand reference clock to I, which is negative 3, just like this. And then we just proceed as normal. The rest of the solve is the same as usual. Whoops. All right, so now I'm going to walk you through the actual calculations for Oxford. And I see the value of clocks relative to the top, regardless of where noon is. So for me, this would be at 4. This would be at 3. This would be at negative 3. So I don't really care where noon is. But because we do that, we have to account for that in our third pair. And I'll show you how to do that. It's super simple. But now let's get started with our first letter, and that is what D needs to do to get to C, which is negative 1. And then you add that to DL, so that's going to give us 3, which is C. Next letter is what L needs to do to get to D, which is 0. Add that to U, which is 3. Add that to DR, which makes this from negative 3 to 0. And then figure out what R needs to do to get to 0, which is negative 3. So we have C, I as our first pair. And now the second pair is kind of cool because it actually uses the values from the first pair in its calculations, which both keeps it really short and also helps you review what your first pair was. So for 2a, we start by adding the 1a value to the d clock. So 1a was 3, so we're going to add 3 to this clock, which brings it here, and then figure out what the r clock needs to do to get to that. So this is negative 4, and this needs to do a 5 to get to negative 4. So our third letter is E. And then to B, we start by adding the 1B value to the L clock here. And 1B was negative 3, so we're going to add negative 3 to negative 5, which brings us to 4. And then figure out what the U clock needs to do to get to 4, which is a 1, which is A. Now for the last pair, we're still on the back side, and we figure out what D needs to do to get to C, which is a 5. Then we add that to the L clock, which brings this to 5. Then we figure out what UL needs to do to get to 5, which is a 3. And then like I mentioned, we need to account for noon, and we simply do that by adding the position of noon. So we were at 3, but noon is at negative 3, so we do 3 plus negative 3, which is 0. Finally, we have 4B, which is calculated by what UL needs to do to get to U, which is a negative 4, and adding that to DR, which brings it to 5, and then figuring out what R needs to do to get to 5, which is a 2. But then once again, we add the value of noon, so that's 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. So now, this is our final memo for Oxford, and we execute it on the opposite side we started memo from. The reference clocks are on screen in brackets for each move. Like I said, for the first two moves, they are both DL for the left hand and D for the right hand. So our first pair was CI, so we're going to move the DL clock to the position C, which is 3 relative to the top. And then with our right hand, we're going to move our right hand reference clock to I, which is negative 3, just by doing this. So this is C, I. Now for the second move, we move once again our DL clock, which is our reference clock for this move, to E. So that's 5, so we just move it right here. And then we have A for this move, so we just move it right here. So this is E, A in Oxford. Now the third move, all the visual moves are the same as Tommy. So you just do that. 
And now this is our last memorized move, our left hand move, or our first letter of the pair was O, so we're going to move our left hand reference clock to zero. And then our second letter is K, which is negative one, so we're just going to move our reference clock for this to negative one. And then everything else is the same. So as a side note, since the execution is technically the same as normal, the lucky cases are also exactly the same. So you still want to minimize the distance between these two clocks, or these two clocks, or these two clocks. So this is a pretty good angle to execute the scramble from. So now you may be wondering if Oxford is actually any better than normal memo. Unfortunately, since I'm the only person who actually uses this method, since I created it with Caleb Chelford a couple months ago, and I've only had a couple months to practice it, I don't have any crazy times to show for it. But the reason I keep practicing it is because logically, I think it makes sense that it should technically be better. So the first advantage was that it should hopefully avoid having to count moves. So for example, if I memorized E when I was starting out, I would have to like to make sure that I had done exactly five ticks. Either that or I would, before I even move the clock, I would have to calculate in my head, okay, this plus five is gonna be here, so I'm gonna do that. And that's a dramatization of reality, of course, but I think this really does happen on a microscopic level before each one of your terms. But with Oxford, you're never gonna have to deal with that because all of those things are calculated and accounted for in the memo itself. And on a similar note, it's largely based off the fact that really fast turners in clock are flip solvers who largely use this kind of visual turning. So they're not memorizing like, oh, I have to do a plus three on this clock and a negative two. They're just saying, oh, I need to move this clock to this position and this clock to that position. And that's pretty much what Oxford is too. The third thing is that Oxford keeps the moves consistent over all seven moves. So in normal, you would have you have to kind of switch between two different modes of thinking, and it's the counted moves that I was talking about, which we which you'd normally do with normal memo. So like plus two, minus two, and then you're alternating between that and the visual moves, where you just match blocks to each other, and those are two two different systems of logic that you subconsciously have to switch between in the middle of your solve that I think could potentially slow you down or confuse you. Even though it's minor, I think it still makes this slightly more optimal. So I think logically it should be faster, but I've only had a couple months to practice it and nobody else is grinding it that I'm aware of. So I thought I'd make this tutorial and hopefully some more people can give it a try and see if it's actually worth using. I think at the very least it's going to be as good as the normal method, if not better. And if you have any counter arguments for my benefit proposals, then please let me know in the comments. So thanks for watching. Hope this helped.